Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 72 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial, let's have a quick look at Gaussian mixture model, which is similar to k-means in that it's a unsupervised machine learning technique and it's actually designed to address some of the shortcomings of k-means. So let's uh, have a quick look at what it is. So as I mentioned, just like k-means, it's also unsupervised machine learning technique, meaning you throw a bunch of data and you say, okay, I wanna divide this into four, five, six clusters, and uh, it does the job. Now, if you ask the question, how do I know what is the right number of clusters, I'm also going to talk about it as part of this video. So please uh, watch this in its entirety. Now, it addresses two primary shortcomings of k-means that are, okay, there is inflexible class shape, right? Okay, uh, although in uh, k-means actually, uh, I mean, in the previous tutorial, please go ahead and watch it. I almost tried to repeat it here, but let's not extend this uh, video beyond uh, uh, what's necessary. So in k-means, you're drawing a line between the classes. You're drawing another line between the classes, right? So it's uh, inflexible class shape. So what if you have a donut shaped class where in the center you have like one cluster, right around it you have a different cluster, yeah? So uh, that's one thing. And the other one, the I think the most uh, important limitation is the k-means clustering is qualitative only. What do we mean by that? When you divide a data point or when you segment that or when you classify that into a spe specific class, there is no probability associated with that. It's like, okay, you belong to class one, this belongs to class two and class three and so on. Uh, with Gaussian mixture model, you can actually get probabilities associated with each class for a given data point. So it clusters the same way as k-means, except it shows a mixed representation of different uh, Gaussians, which is probability distributions. In this example, we are showing three different clusters. Let's say our k equals to three, and then it's going to divide this data into three different clusters with the centers. And how is a Gaussian defined? By its position, by its center, and the variance, right? So, or the shape. So this is a quick summary of Gaussian mixture model. And uh, here is a uh, practical example, I should say. And on the left hand side, think of this as your microscope image or any image that you are or any data that you're trying to cluster. And in this case, we see four different types of uh, regions. So on the right hand side, let's say uh, there is a center like mu1, 2, 3 and 4 for these four Gaussians. And then each of this is associated with some sort of a variance. And each of this represents all the pixels corresponding to a given class okay or all the data points corresponding to a given class again images are visual so i keep using image examples but this can be applied to any data set where you're trying to find patterns okay so uh, again how does it actually work i'm gonna throw two sentences two statements at you but then i'll explain that in a minute okay the algorithm consists of two steps one is called expectation the other one is called maximization the expectation is each data point that you have, it calculates the probability generated by each component in the mixed model. If you have two components, and then it goes to each data point and says, what is the probability of that belonging to component one or class one, okay? And what is the probability of that belonging to class two? So this is expectation step. It calculates the probability for each data point belonging to a specific component. And maximization is, it adjusts the mean and variance of this Gaussian that we are trying to fit, okay, to maximize the possibility of the model generating these parameters. Let's have a quick look at the image. So in this case, we have two clusters. I wanna divide this data into two. Just like k-means, it randomly finds uh, or assigns the center for the Gaussian and also the variance. It has to start somewhere. So in this case, it's starting right there. Now you look at, okay, uh, this data point, for example, what is the probability of that belonging to the blue? Well, let's say the probability is 80 and belonging to green is 20. And how are we calculating? Based on where it is in terms of the blue uh, Gaussian and where it is with respect to the green Gaussian. And similarly for this data point that's far away, this data point even outside of the green uh, you know, Gaussian, but for that to be part of green, because green is closer to it, is 90%, and for that to be part of blue is about 10%, that's it. So the next iteration 
it updates the variance mean and weight okay so it updates the uh, weight of this how much and it updates the variance what is the shape of your gaussian and the mean okay and then it plots this again so now for this data point okay the probabilities are probably the same now you can look at the shape and the uh, for each of these data point the the probabilities are updated yeah or the weights are updated and then it continues this until it reaches an equilibrium or or it uh, doesn't change uh, much so that's a quick theory of gaussian mixture model again i know i'm covering this pretty much in a few minutes, but if you really love the way it's actually doing things, please go ahead and dig a bit further by reading the original papers and uh, any other published papers on this topic. So let's jump into our code to have a quick look at how to use it in Python. Again, the whole point of these series is using these established machine learning methods as tools for our image processing or for our research. So that's why I'm not going too deep into each of this. Uh, and not that I'm expert in any of these, but uh, that we are just using them as uh, a tool to solve our problem right now. And let's define the problem now. So the problem here is, uh, okay, I have an image and I'd like to segment. And this is exactly the same image we used in the previous tutorial, which was k-means. Okay, and the approach would be almost identical as you'll see in a minute. Okay, let's import our standard libraries like we normally do. And let's read our image and plot it. So there you go and have a quick look at the plot and uh, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this image. We have used this in a few videos by now. And visually I can tell that okay, I have one, two, three and uh, possibly four clusters, maybe five. And if I squint my eyes, I can probably see at least six right here. And uh, if you look at that faint line, maybe seven. So if you want to read too much into this, you can find any number of clusters, but let's keep it to four for now. So the way we do this is again, just like in the last video, we are going to unwrap our image. Right now it's uh, a two dimensional image with three channels. So let's collapse all of these numbers into one single column. So 653 by 734, right? So we are going to reshape our NumPy array. And as you can see now we have 479,000, which is the total number of pixel values. And uh, the Gaussian mixture model is again available in scikit-learn except in this case it's not in cluster it's in mixture okay scikit-learn.mixture import Gaussian mixture and I'm a bit too lazy to type this entire thing as Gaussian mixture so I'm importing that as GMM okay so let's go ahead and run this line and uh, again very similar to k-means I'm instantiating it or I'm uh, creating an object called GMM model by defining GMM and number of components equals to four. And again, go ahead and look at the documentation for uh, GMM to see what other parameters go into this uh, model. And I'm fitting this right away onto my image too, which is this data set that we just unwrapped, okay? So let's go ahead and apply that. And the fit should be uh, a few seconds. There you go, it's actually done. And now let's predict it. And what are we predicting it on? We are predicting this onto our own image, unlike uh, other machine learning models, which you'll see later on, where you train it on one set of data and then predict on different set of data. Here, we are actually trying to fit our existing data. So that's why I'm uh, uh, predict predicting this on the same data. So let's go ahead and do that. Prediction is pretty fast. And uh, if you, I called it GMM labels. If you want, you can call it predicts, just like we have done in the past uh, videos. And uh, the labels are, we have how many? Four components. So we should see labels one, zero, zero right there and there should be two and three i see a few twos there right there and uh, hopefully three should show up somewhere yeah there you go three so we have four classes right there okay now we have to reshape our array into our original image shape so let's go ahead and do that and reshape my labels into this original shape and let's go ahead and plot it and let's have a quick look at our plot. So this is our input image and this is the segmented image. And again, this actually did an amazing job. Follow this vein right there. You see that vein right here? And look at that in the segmentation. It actually did an amazing, amazing job. So uh, deep learning, of course, works great. 
but then it requires hundreds and hundreds of images, sometimes thousands of images, but you probably don't need that for most of your images. You probably need k-means and uh, you know Gaussian mixture model and some of these techniques that are well established that people have been using for a few decades by now. Okay, so try the, give this a try first before jumping on to your other actually deep learning type of uh, topics. Okay, so uh, this bottom part, now the question is, in this example, we looked at the image and we said, okay, it probably we have four different regions, but how do we know what is the best split? Well, for microscopy images, you can look at them and you say, okay, I know there are four different things. There is a nuclei and there is, you know, this other uh, cytoplasm and there's this something else, you know, and uh, I just want to divide this into three classes. But most of the time, you probably don't know how many classes are the ideal classes. So for that, we can actually use some of the knowledge that uh, uh, people have already established in the field of information theory. And uh, information theory, is uh, again it can be it, uh, it's it's very interesting like how what type of information does the data contain and what is the best you know ways to split this data so that's out of that came comes this bayesian okay information criteria in short they call it bic i believe there is also another one called aic they both are related so i'm just going to talk about bic for now in fact even aic is also available if you want to use it just instead of bic just import uh, aic that's it okay but first, let's see what I'm talking about. So Bayesian information criteria is used to find the best number of components, like how many components do I need to divide this image into? So it calculates this BIC value, and the larger the BIC, the worse it is, meaning you want a BIC where uh, you have the most number of uh, information contained, like, okay, by minimizing the BIC, you actually get the best uh, information. Uh, I am pretty sure I'm confusing you right now, so let's go ahead and uh, work on this. So let's go ahead and clear off everything from here and start from scratch. So let's go ahead and import our image and reshape the image like we have done earlier. And now let's import our Gaussian mixture model, exactly the same as what we have done. Now, instead of uh, uh, four components, let's actually put n equals to two two components and run exactly the same line that we have done up here, right? Number of components equals to four. I'm just doing two right now. Everything else is exactly the same. So I'm dividing this image into two instead of four. Now let's calculate the BIC value. So to do that, take your model. Of course, you can do very similar things for k-means, even if you want to uh, find out how what is the best way to split your data do BIC uh, even for k-means. So in this case, okay, I have my model, GMM model, and dot BIC, and on what data? On my image too. So let's go ahead and do that, and print out the BIC value, and it calculates the BIC. It says negative 620, 6, 62, I, sorry, I have to, 6,226,000, sorry about that. And now let's change my n equals to two to n equals to four, because we know four actually works well. And let's have a quick look at BIC. This should be uh, hopefully smaller than that other number. So there it's negative 6.2 million. Now we have negative 6.47 million or something. So this is going down. Maybe five is uh, a better answer, but at some point you don't want to divide this into too many components. So the easiest way to figure this out is to calculate the BIC value for all the uh, uh, clusters from one to 10. Well, maybe one to seven is probably okay, but let's leave it to one to 10. And I usually find out where the elbow is as the BIC goes down and that elbow value is the right split. Otherwise you're not getting uh, the maximum return. So let's, uh, the way you do that is, uh, I'm doing number of components is uh, range one to 10 and then I just have, uh, okay, run this GMM for n in number of components, meaning first do it for one, then two, then three, then four, all the way to 10, and I'm just plotting it for number of components versus BIC value, that's it, okay? Again, please don't worry, I'll share the code. So let's go ahead and do this. This may take a while because it's actually doing this GMM for each of these about 10 times. So let's uh, give this a pause and continue as soon as it's done. Okay, it's done. Well, it says PLT is not defined because I did not run this line called uh, pyplot 
dot plt let's go ahead and plot it again because it's already calculated let's plot it and uh, it should show up in plots right there so there you go so for my n equals to one the bic is uh, uh, right over there and then it keeps going down keeps going down keeps going down does that mean if i split my image into nine components it's actually better uh, I mean, of course, you'll get nine different regions, but typically you'll realize that wherever that elbow is, this value right there is the right value. So in this example, four would be ideal split. And uh, just to prove that, okay, let's go ahead and do my previous example with n equals to nine. So let's go ahead and change this to nine and see what we get, okay? So let's run this. And you can see that, okay, this seems to be dividing this into nine, but you see all this salt and pepper because it's it's now, uh, d you know, trying to divide this into way too many more than what we actually have. So you have to think about why is it giving me nine? That's because your image probably is noisy and it's considering some of that noise components as one of the regions. So you have to evaluate this a bit better. But this, uh, a good rule of thumb, is wherever that elbow is, that's the right value. Okay, go ahead and change this to four and you should be all fine. So I hope you found this tutorial again to be very useful. Uh, between k-means and Gaussian mixture model, I think uh, unsupervised machine learning, you're uh, good to go with, this, uh, with these two. There are many other unsupervised machine learning algorithms like these that use clustering, for example, or Gaussian type of mixture models, but these two are almost the industry standards and that's the reason why I would like you to know about this. So in the next tutorial, let's talk about a different approach, different machine learning uh, algorithm. Let's understand it better and hopefully let's apply that for image processing. Thank you very much.